What's up guys, Kyle here again, and today we are checking out the Sabo Generation 3 from Armored Amplification. Let's do it! Alright guys, hope you're doing great out there today. If this is your first time here at my channel, my name is Kyle. And what I do is I take awesome, high gain related guitar gear and I record it with a simple SM57 process and get my words all mixed up and backwards and stuff. And I give you guys the unprocessed audio on your end. That's it. So if you're into East Standard Thrashers, Dropsy Hardcore riffs, and dudes with plenty of cringy jokes in stock, you're in the right place. Consider hitting the like button and subscribing on your way out so you don't miss any more of my stuff. Thanks. All right, guys, so today I am excited because I get to, in a way, revisit the first amp that was ever sent to me to demo on this channel. Way back in the infancy of the belligerent amateur, I was sent an amp by Armored Amplification and my buddy Dalton Peters in order to check out here on the channel, and Armored was actually the first company to send me a full-blown amplifier to do a demo for. So here we are, just over two years later, and, uh, we are now demoing the updated, upgraded version of that amplifier. This is the new Generation 3 Sabo from Armored Amplification. So Armored Amplification is a US run and made company by Mr. James Hudman. So the Sabo is essentially a one channel, sort of modded Marshall style platform, but really it has its own thing going on because as you probably heard in that intro clip, doesn't really have the most Marshall-y of voices. It's almost like a Marshall and a Mesa kind of mated together and you get a little bit of each world to form a very custom, unique sounding amplifier. And with the Generation 3, Armored has installed a bunch of basically upgrades to this amplifier. They have tweaked the tone stack on this thing pretty significantly. And I can already tell you, uh, I've spent a little bit of time with the amplifier before starting this video. The Generation 2.5, I felt like had a really cool and unique voicing, much like this amp, but it didn't play with boosts on a lot of settings super well, and the low end was a little bit too tubby for my taste. I can tell you from my personal preference, I think the Generation 3 is a massive upgrade because I pretty much fell into sync with this amp right off the bat. I had no problems dialing in the voicing that I wanted to hear out of this thing with the response that I wanted to feel as well. So if you're asking my opinion, the Generation 3 is definitely an upgrade from a tonal standpoint as well. So let's kind of dive into some of the features and some of the upgrades on the Generation 3. The first and the most notable one, on the back of this amp, there is now a thick switch, which is essentially adding an additional gain stage to the amplifier. I had it off in the intro clip and I had the amp boosted, but we're gonna flip that switch on and I'm gonna show you just how much overall kind of saturation and fullness it adds. The amp also has an effects loop, much like the previous version, but this version now has a controllable effects send and return level. Those are gonna be located on the inside of the amp though. They're not on the back panel. You're gonna have to get that out. You're gonna have to get the chassis out and you're going to adjust the trim pots, but that's kind of like a set it and forget it type thing once you have it set up with your effects. Once you set those levels, you don't really need to mess with them too much and so you start uh, making big changes to your pedal board. So that is a nice uh, kind of upgrade or quality of life feature, whatever you wanna call it, to the Generation 3. Like I said, the tone stack on this amp was altered a little bit. The previous one had, apparently it had a little bit more of a mid bump. It's been two years since I played the amp, but I do remember having a pretty significant like vocal mid voicing to it. Uh, the mids on this one do seem pretty smooth until you get really high up on that dial, which of course, 
You know me, I like my mids, so I'm high up on that dial. The two gain controls over here as well have more range to them. The gain comes on a little bit later in the sweep of the pot. So, so overall, that kind of just makes the amp more versatile because you can now dial in more of a gain range as opposed to just high gain all the time, which I don't know why you wouldn't want to be high gain all the time unless you're some sort of pathetic loser. Over here on the master section, unique to the armored stuff, uh, there is not only a resonance and a presence, resonance and a presence, I will literally never say those two words correctly together in my life. Not only is there a resonance and a presence, but there is an attack control here in the middle and that's going to affect the overall kind of tightness and the upper mid direct directionality <laughs> i'm just throwing words out there at this point basically it's just going to give you more attack it's going to give more of an upper mid clankiness to the tone that's going to kind of cut through the mix make the amp a little bit easier to play under the right hand so i really like that attack uh, control and i generally have it dialed pretty high for my style of playing and then moving over to your general EQ section, you've got a master, you've got your BMT controls, again, the double gains here, and then we have a sweep control, which again, this is gonna kind of shape those mids. Uh, it's gonna give you more control over how you want the mids to sound. Down here, we've got four switches on this front panel. First off, we've got a bright switch, which gives a slight bump in the highs. Second, we have a diode mode, which is going to adjust the compression of the diodes that are in the circuit. So overall, that's gonna kinda adjust your saturation uh, and your clipping mode of the amp. It's gonna adjust the feel a little bit. Moving over to the shape. The shape, in my opinion, has by far the most effect on the amplifier because um, in the up mode that I have it right now, it significantly darkens the amp. So you're gonna have to bump that, res that presence and the treble control in order to get your highs back. But overall, it just kind of smooths the amp out and then finally here, we have a focus switch, which does exactly that. It focuses the amp a little bit more, makes it a little bit more tight, a little bit more forward in the mid frequencies that are going to cut through in the mix and makes the amp sound more focused. Go figure. So with all that being said, uh, I am still in the lower gain. I don't have the, the gain switch on the back enabled. We're gonna stay there for a minute. I'm gonna turn off my overdrive, which was the electric eye mud killer. We're gonna put everything back to roughly noon on this amp. I'm not gonna adjust the master volume. We're gonna pull those gains all the way down to nine o'clock. I'm gonna put all these switches in the down position, and then we're gonna hear how this thing sounds and start dialing in some tones. So as you can tell right now, it's fairly low gain and it's a little bit muffled on that top end. I have noticed on this amp that to get the amp to really come alive, especially when you have that shape uh, switch in the darker setting, you're gonna really wanna push the treble and the presence to get it to kinda you know, come to life and take that blanket off the speakers. So just doing that alone has already kind of made it come to life a little bit. Let's dial up these gains a little bit. And let's get a little bit more mid and treble. So as you can tell, even doing that, the way we have it dialed in now, it still doesn't sound like a Marshall. Like it's got its own thing going on. It's way more low mid content than the average modern Marshall style amplifier. Much, much fuller. Uh, again, it's really in those low mids where you notice it the most. Let's dial that sweep control up and I'll just show you how much that kind of broadens the mids out overall. And here's what happens when we dial it back to nine o'clock. As you can see, dialing the sweep back kind of focuses it more in certain frequencies where as dialing it up kind of broadens them out, pushes the mids forward overall. But so we're gonna leave the sweep kind of dialed back a little bit. Let's get those gains up to about noon o'clock here.
and we are starting to get some saturation but again i would like a little bit more attack so let's dial that attack knob up to about three o'clock play the same riff but we'll back it down to nine o'clock you're getting that more upper mid you know kind of more of a modern upper mid that just cuts through it makes the amp feel a little bit more percussive under the hand as well dial it back down again yeah it just feels way softer when you have it dialed back so we're gonna dial that up i'm gonna get a little bit more presence a little bit more treble and a little bit more mids now remember i always tell you guys dial with your ears not with your eyes this is an amp where that's going to be especially important because a lot of people are going to think mids and treble at three o'clock or above that's either going to be way too bright or they're going to say this amp doesn't have enough range but that's not true at all especially once you start to push the volume on this thing it really comes alive that power section really kind of opens it up we can still dial these up even higher than we have them and we it's not it doesn't get harsh especially uh with the shape switch in the down position even with these controls that high it doesn't get harsh but let's go ahead and flip that shape switch up just so i can show you what a massive difference that it does make we're going to switch it up again And again, it's still balanced, but those upper frequencies are definitely pushed forward more. The amp sounds really alive. It doesn't sound thin though. We've still got plenty of low frequencies and we've got our resonance and our bass at the same controls or the same settings that we had them at before. So if we even wanted a little bit more fullness, we can go ahead and bump up both those controls. You'll notice that more once we get some more saturation on the amp. With the game controls at noon, I'm gonna go ahead, I'm gonna kick in that extra gain stage and touch nothing else. I'm going to go ahead and pull that treble and that uh, mid back a little bit because with that extra gain stage on, it kind of enhances those upper frequencies a little bit more. And it's starting to come together for that higher gain tone, but we gotta push that gain up even more. And doing that on both these controls, you can already hear that we're getting some more noise through the speaker, so it's gonna be more saturated. This is about the time when I would want to flip that bright or that focus switch up in order to get a little bit more of a focus tone. Again, no boost on out in front of this amp, guys, and it's still got a nice right hand feel to it. All right, so I wanna get this thing really saturated. Let's turn up both of these gain controls. And that gain too really brings on a lot of gain when you get up to that three o'clock setting. All right, so we are super saturated at this point. But because you guys always ask, we're gonna go ahead and dime it. We're gonna go ahead and turn that back a good bit. We're gonna flip that gain switch down again and go back into the lower gain setting.
Yeah, man, I dig that. That's fun. Time to do a boost yet? Not just yet. Let's, we'll wait just a second. That way you guys don't yell at me. Let's play a drop D riff. Nice chunky bass. I will say for my personal taste, the amp overall, uh, I think if I were to run it, I would put an EQ in a loop and remove some of those low mids because that's the only area in the frequency range of this amp where I'm like, mm. I tend to like the lower mids pulled out a little bit of most amps anyways. That's just my own personal preference. And I think that that would kind of tighten up the response even more on this thing. So. And I'm gonna kick on a boost. So instead of kicking on the Electric Eye Mud Killer, which is what you guys already heard and is a fantastic boost, we're gonna kick on the MXR M77, which has returned to my board recently. Now this amp is responding a lot to the boost, so that means we're gonna pull that bass up, we're gonna pull the resonance up. And honestly, just using that boost alone has fixed the low mid thing that I was just talking about. I think that sounds awesome. Let's actually get maybe a little bit more gain on gain two here. And again, it's kind of Marshall-y, kind of Mesa-y. It's got a little bit of both going on. Let's dial that sweep up though and see if we can kind of fill those mids out a little bit more. Honestly, I like that less because it makes the amp sound not as focused. Let's pull that back and let's just add some mids with the mid control. All right, so what happens if we scoop those mids? Yeah, nice clanky chug, really punchy when you scoop those mids out like that, but you know me, I like my mid. So let's play a patented Thrash Damon riff before we go over into some active pickups. So that was with the Dungan Distortion. Let's try an EMG81 and see how it reacts to that. All right, so already uh, the top end has been kind of cut off pretty significantly. Let's try flipping this switch up. Woo! All right, we have a lot more brightness. Let's pull the treble back. Let's pull the presence back. All 
Man, this thing really reacts to different pickups too. This amp sounds completely different to me now. Let's pull those mids out again and a little bit of treble. Yeah, kind of sounds like instant Metallica, even without rolling the mids back super far. I have them at like uh, 11 o'clock on the dial, but with those EMGs put into the front of this with the MXR, super Metallica E. Let's try a drop tune riff real quick. So definitely getting that hate breed kind of tone out of it for sure. So with that being said, let's grab a guitar with some low output pickups and see how this thing re uh, re reacts to that. Remarks from the now. All right guys, EC1000T on Nico 2 Pro pickups. These are way lower output than the EMGs we were just on and you're gonna hear it right away. So we're gonna wanna flip this back into the darker, smoother setting. Yeah, these pickups are already focused, so we don't need the additional focus from that. Let's turn gain one up a little bit. And another drop C riff, but with low output pickup. So these pickups in my personal experience don't do great on the lower tunings. Let's go back up to standard and play a thrash riff. So definitely does the thrash thing way better than it did the drop tune riffs in my opinion. The amp is reacting well to the lower output pickups. We are on the, again, the added gain stage with a boost out front and it's handling it just fine. I think it sounds cool so far. The Duncan Distortion has still been my favorite. But last but not least, we need to try a seven string because we, we just do. Okay guys, Schechter Hellraiser PT Hybrid. I always get the title of this one wrong. We've got the EMG 57 in the bridge. I have the Electric Eye Mud Killer back on. And here's what we have without changing anything else on the amp. Honestly, this thing sounds brutal with the seven string.
right guys, that's gonna do it for me today on the Armored Amplification Sabo Gen 3. What did you guys think about this amp? Let me know down in the comments of this video. If you would like to purchase this amplifier, you can. I'll put a link to Armored Amplification's website and Facebook pages down in the description. At the time of filming, this amplifier is $2,499. James has them in stock and he's got another 20 set to be built in February. So limited numbers on these things, but they are currently in stock if you would like to grab one. Thanks again to James and Armored Amplification for sending this out to me in order to make a demo for you guys. If you would like to support my channel, what I do here down in the description are all my affiliate links, including Sweetwater and Zounds. You guys click those links, buy something from those fine retailers. It costs you nothing extra and it greatly helps the channel. I would really appreciate it. Or you can add your name to this list of incredible people by joining my Patreon community and supporting the channel that way because everything that you guys put into the Patreon fund goes back into more gear for this channel so I can make content for you guys. And thank you to each and every one of you who supports me through Patreon. I love you forever, whether you want me to or not. Thanks so much for watching, guys. Kyle here again. We'll see you next time. You know what this wall is missing? Another amp. There we go.